this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little collar choker style necklace. Now this isn't a true choker. It doesn't it doesn't hold up high on your neck and attach really close to your your throat. This is more it lays more collarbone level right above your collarbone the little charm lays right in the indentation of your throat but it is designed to go close to your neck so it's choker-esque so um, when it is closer to your neck it will lay in the right position however I show you during this process how to modify it so it can be just a regular type of necklace too so that if you do not want to draw attention to your neck or your throat you do not have to you can you can um, make this without doing the last couple of steps and it'll be looser and lay lower you can also make it longer to make it lay the way that you would like so this is using the deep sea the deep sea jewels treasure bag. However, I will discuss some alternative beads that you can substitute to do this. Also, I have put in an order for these beads and these charms. It, they, it just hasn't arrived yet. So in a week or so, I will have these beads available. So if you want to make it exactly like this, and you didn't get a treasure bag, you can. Otherwise, the pattern itself can serve as inspiration. You can modify it and use what you have on hand to make something similar but different at the same time. So anyway, this is what this looks like. It's really cute. I'm going to get you in close to the focal area here so you can see, whoop, maybe not that close, so you can see how pretty it is. So that's really pretty. And it lays really nice and it looks really cute. Summerish, beachy-ish look. So let's go ahead and look at the material list and get started on this project. Okay, for this particular project today, we will be using some beads found in the Deep Sea Jewels treasure bag. However, you can follow along and make this project with something similar in size and shape if you would like. Also, I will be having some of these beads on my website very soon and this charm. Um, I have them on order and they're just taking their sweet time to get here, but I will have them soon. So if you would like to get some and do this and you didn't get the bag, you can do that too. So what we're going to be using is we have a full strand of these column type beads and they are 7 by 4.5 to 5 millimeter in size. You could substitute it with something similar like this is an 8 by 4 cuboid. So you could use something like this too. You just have to modify your beads a little bit to your length more than anything because they're a little bit bigger. So you could use something similar in say shape and size to do this. Then we are going to be adding to the treasure bag some Toho seed beads. And I have a variety here. I have an 80 in frosted white, an 80 in opaque turquoise, an 110 in frosted white, and an 110 in galvanized permanent finish aluminum. And as I said, they're all Toho. Then from the treasure bag, we'll be using this little seashell charm that has a little faux pearl in the middle of it. You can use any kind of charm you would like if you are doing this without the treasure bag. Then we are going to use two wire guardians and a lobster claw clasp and some jump rings. Now it just depends on how long you want to make your extender. This is going to be a choker style necklace. So I am adding an extender at the end to make it more adaptable for all different sizes of people. I made my original design with the toggle clasp that came in the bag. However, you have to put this on properly so it doesn't twist and um, it's not adjustable. So we are going to go ahead and do it a little bit differently on this particular um, time frame here. So we are then going to use a size 12 beading needle and we will be using six pound fire line. You can use eight pound nano fill or 10 pound nano fill if you would like, but do not go any larger than six pound fire line. And I will be using a size 12 beading needle. And 
I will put a wingspan of thread to start. That's when you put your arms out to your sides like you're going to fly away. And you measure from your fingertip on your first arm, fingertips, all the way across the length of that first arm, across your chest, and the length of your second arm to your fingertips on that arm. That's a wingspan. You will need to extend your fire line during this project. And if you do not know how, I will have a link in the description box beneath the video player to show you how. <clears throat> I need to apologize for my voice. I am getting over a cold and my voice is still a little weak. So I apologize, but we're going to try to get through this anyway. At moments it's strong and at moments it's just not. So let's go ahead and get prepared, get your beads out and let's get started. Okay, to begin this project, we will start by picking up an, one of our little cylindrical beads here, and then we will pick up an 8 in the frosted white color, and then we'll pick up an 11 in the silver, and then we're going to pick up an 8 in the turquoise color, another 11 in the silver color, and then another white frosted 8 -oh. This is what you should have on your needle. Then we're going to just bring this down to the end of our thread. You don't have to leave a long tail, just enough so it doesn't slide off. Now, hold on to that tail and hold on to your big bead and then go back down into the big bead. Holding on to the tail and the big bead together like this and pull all of the seed beads down so that they lay on top of your cylindrical bead here, just like this. Then, or column bead, whatever you want to call it. Then we're going to pick up an 8 in the frosted color, and then an 11 in the silver color, and then an 8 in the turquoise color, then an 11 silver, and a white frosted 8 like this. And I am going to go back into this bead, the big bead with this. And as I come through, I'm going to go up the 8 and the 11 on the other side, just like this. And I'm going to pull this down while holding on to these beads on this side and the big bead so that nothing slips. And I'm going to pull this down. Now, you are not completely secure here, so don't pull too hard or you'll just pull your beads off your thread here. So this is what you have, kind of a funny looking little guy here. Now, we're coming out of this 11 o seed bead here. We're going to go into the 8 o next to it, pull the thread through, and then we're going to go down through the 11 o and 8 o right next to where you're coming out, right there. Then you're going to cross down into the column bead and into the 8 o and 11 o on the other side, just like this. Ignore your tail and just pull the thread through, just like that. Now we are going to sew through this top part and just secure the whole thing. So we're going to go back through again. Coming out of this 11 o we're going to go into this 8 o I'm just ignoring my tail, and then I'm going to go down into the 11 o and 8 o and then on the same side, on the other side of the column bead, I'll come out of the 8 o and 11 o And then I will go up through the 8 o on this side, right next to where I'm coming out of. Now we can take our scissors and I've got my dull scissors again and we can cut this down and just get that tail out of the way. I've left a little tag here as you can see that little tag. I'll just get my flame close to it and just burn that down and let it roll into the beads just like that. Now I need to secure one more time by going through these, you can see how my beads are a little loose here. I'm going to go through this 11 o 
and I'm going to go through the 8 0 and come back through this cylindrical bead on this side, column bead, whatever you want to call it. And now that's tightened that up. And I'm going to go up into this 8 0 here. Oh, come on. It's not tight. I just am not coordinated. There we go. So I've gone up through the 8 0 and the 11 0. <clears throat> And now I'm going to go through the 80 here. Now we are going to place our wire guardian on just so everything is prepared and ready when we're done here. And we can just put, we can just attach our clasping to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up two, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry everybody. I'll try not to do that. But I'm going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads and an 8 0, and I'm going to drop it down to the 8 0 I'm coming out of, just like that. And then I'm going to pick up my wire guardian, and I'm just going to place it on my finger here and get you close. So now I'm going to come up through one side of the tube on the wire guardian, just like this. And hold on to it between my fingers and just pull my thread to, through until I get it down to that 8 0 seed bead. And then I'm going to go back into the other side of the wire guardian, just like this. I'm going to put my thumb and finger over the wire guardian and this way I can guide my thread down until it slips into the divot on top of the wire guardian, just like that. I'm going to pull it down a little bit further and then I am going to go through the 8 0 seed bead again. Here. And my wire guarding kind of slipped through it, so I'm going to back it off and go through this 8 0 seed bead right here. And pull my thread through. Now, make sure that your thread doesn't slip off the little divot on the top. If it does, just put it back in there just like I just did. And then grab a pair of pliers and just gently squeeze that wire guardian shut just a little bit. So let me hold on to it a little bit. And just gently squeeze it shut just like that. Now that I'm coming through this 8-0 right here underneath the wire guardian, I can pick up two 11 0 seed beads, and I'm using my silver tone. And I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 8 0 from which I started putting my clasping on. So I started on this side, I'm coming through this side now. And I'm just going to pull this down. Just like that. Now we're just going to sew through that a couple of times. So I'm going to come up through the two 11 0s into the 8 0 and then into the tube on my wire guardian, just like this. I'm going to put my thumb over it, squeeze, pull the thread through, go into the other side. I'm going to go into the tube on the wire guardian, the in the 8 0 seed bead, and the two 11 0s on this side. And pull my thread through. As I do this, I squeeze the wire guardian so I can feel the thread pop down into the divot on top of the wire guardian. And then I'm going to go through the 8 0 seed bead here again. Now, just for good measure, we are going to go through it one more time. So I'm going to do that off camera and we'll come back after we've gone through that one more time and you're coming out of your 8 0 seed bead. Okay, so I have secured one more time through my clasping portion here with my wire guardian. So now I am coming out of this 8 0 seed bead and we are going to do our next unit. So what we need to do is we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead. We're going to go into the 11 0, the 8 0, and the big bead, just like this. And I'm just exiting 
right out of the big bead here. And then I am going to go through the 8-0 and the 11-0 underneath the big bead, just like this. Now I am going to go into the 8-0 turquoise color one here on top. And we're going to make our next unit now, and it will be pretty rep repetitive from this point. So what we're going to do is we are going to pick up an 11-0, and I will be using all of my silver 11-0s silver through this entire part. So I'm not going to call it silver. It will be using the white ones later. So I'm going to pick up my 11-0 seed bead, and then I'm going to pick up a white 8-0, and then I'm going to pick up one of my big beads, my cylindrical beads. I'm going to drop it down, and then I'm going to pick up an 8-0 in white, and then I'm going to pick up an 11-0, and then I'm going to pick up an 8-0 in turquoise. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop it down. Then I'm going to pick up an 11-0, and then I'm going to pick up another white 8 -0. and I'm going to go through the big bead again. So I've got this laying down so that I can kind of balance it well. Then I'm just going to pick it up with the big bead and pull my beads through. Just like this. Now I'm coming out of the big bead. Sorry, trying to get a little drink of water. And I need to pick up an 8-0 and an 11-0. Just like this. And I'm going to go up through this 8-0 seed bead on the opposite side from which we have attached our new unit. And I'm just going to pull this through. Just like this. Now we have to sew through this entire unit and secure it. So we're going to go down into the 11-0 next to the 8-0 we're coming out of, into the cylindrical bead, into the 8-0 on the other side, and the 11-0. <clears throat> then we're going to go into the 8-0 here. And now we are going to go into the 11-0 an 8-0 on the other side of the 8-0 that you're coming out of. And then go down into the big column bead here. Once we get through that, then we're going to go through the 8-0 on this side and the 11-0. Then we will go through the 8-0 here, just like this. Now we just need to sew back down to the bottom of the unit here so we can make another unit. So we're coming out of this 8-0, we're going to go into the 11-0 and the 8-0 beneath it and the column bead. Then we can go up through the 8-0 on the other side of the column bead and the 11-0 on the other side of the 8-0, just like this. and through the 8-0. Let's do one more and then we'll go off camera and till we have done the first side to length and I can let my voice rest a little bit. I apologize for this. Okay, so now we're coming out of this 8-0 seed bead. We need to do the exact same thing we just did. Now that we have everything secure, we are going to pick up an 11-0 and then we're going to pick up a white 8 -oh seed bead. Then we're going to pick up our cylindrical bead and we're going to drop it down. Then we're going to pick up another white 8 -oh, and we are going to pick up an 11 -oh, and then we're going to pick up an 8 -oh in turquoise and we're going to drop it down. Then we're going to pick up another 11 -oh, and an 8 -oh in white and drop it down. 
So on top of your cylindrical bead, you now have an 8-0, 11-0, 8-0 in turquoise, 11-0, and 8-0 in white. We are then going to just leave this laying on your mat and just kind of pick up the cylindrical bead, balance it on your mat and your hand, and then come through just the cylindrical bead and pull the seed beads down. Now you're going to pick up another 8-0 seed bead in white and then another 11-0. And we are going to go into the opposite side of the 8-0 seed bead from which we're attaching. So we're going to go here on the opposite side from which we started. And pull this down just like this. Now we are going to sew back through this entire unit because that not only balances it, it makes it look neat and it gives it strength. So just sew through one more time. You're coming out of this 8-0 seed bead that you're attached to. You're going to go up through the 11-0, the 8-0, the cylindrical bead, the 8-0, and the 11-0 on the other side of the cylindrical bead, just like this. And you're going to push your needle through. Then you're going to go through the 8-0 seed bead, just like this. And again, down through the 11-0, 8-0, and the big bead in the center. If you can, you can go ahead and go through the 8-0 and the 11-0 underneath the big bead, just like that. And pull. Now go back through your 8-0 again that you've attached to and then you need to sew back down the other side so that you can do your next unit. So I'm going through the seed beads on top of the um, column bead and then the seed beads beneath the column bead just like this and then I'm going to go through the 8 seed bead. Now if you need to, back up the video and do a couple of more units just like this until you get the hang of it and then keep going until you have 12 units. So this is the first half of our necklace. We are now going to put on our center piece with our little charm. But because we're making a collar or almost choker style necklace, we want to make sure that it's going to fit properly. So I am aiming for my main portion of my necklace to be 16 inches. However, I'm going to be adding some clasping, which will give me about three quarters of an inch more. Depending upon the size of your clasping, it can give you up to an inch more too. So what I am aiming for is about eight inches on this side so that I will have the body of the necklace around 16 inches. Even though I'm going to add a centerpiece, I am then later going to do an embellishment that will kind of cinch it all together. So um, I will end up again closer to a 16 inch on the body of my necklace. So from my wire guardian to the end, I am just slightly over eight inches. If you are a bigger person, you want to aim more for the nine inch mark. If you're a small person, you'll probably want to reduce it by one unit. So you'll probably, if you're bigger and you want it to make it around 18 inch choker, you're probably going to have to go um, at least two units, I think, to fill that in. So once you have figured out the amount of units you need, then you'll be coming out of your last unit here. Now, when you do your, um, your securing stitch, just sewing back around the unit, you will want to exit the 11-0 here and not go into the 8-0. So normally after you've done it, you'll go up through the 8-0 and then you'll make your next unit. Well, we're just going to exit the 11-0 here. So we've come through the cylindrical bead, the 8-0 and the 11-0, and that's where we are exiting. Now we are going to pick up three, or excuse me, two 11-0 seed beads 
and an Edo in the turquoise color. And we're going to drop it down to the piece. <clears throat> then we're going to pick up our charm. And you can use any charm you want. If you have the treasure bag, of course, you have this one. But you just want to make sure you have a loop on that charm or pendant that you're using that is flat. So when you lay it down, it's flat against the bead mat. It's not vertical this way. Then you're going to go through that loop and bring it down to the Edo seed bead. And then we're just going to go back through just the Edo. So go through the loop and then go through the Edo seed bead. Like this, I'm going to hold on to that Edo and I'm just going to pull my thread through until I can bring my charm up to the Edo. And if it flips, just turn it towards you. Like this. Then you are going to pick up three 11 o seed beads onto your needle. And you're going to drop them down to that 8 o right there. Then you're going to pick up an 8 o in the white color and a cylindrical bead and drop it down. <clears throat> you are then going to pick up a white 8 o an 11 o and a turquoise 8 o and an 11 o and a white 8 o like this and drop that down to the column bead here and then we're going to go back into just the big bead so just go into that big bead hold on to it and pull all of these seed beads down to it and just arrange it, pull it, play with it until it lays properly like that. Now, arrange it to where your thread is coming out towards the inside of the necklace here. So just pull your thread over. If it's down on the other side of the ado, you wanna make sure it's up here, not down on the side of the pendant. Then pick up another white 8 o and 11 o and a turquoise 8 o like this. Drop this down to your piece. Make sure it falls towards the inside of the bead here, this side here, away from you. Then we have to go into this first 11 o here that's closest to the 8 o on the other side right here, and we have to go from the charm side through. So this is awkward for me because I'm trying to stay in camera. I'm going to go into this 11 here from the charm side up into the 8 and then I'm going to go through the big bead and the 8 and 11 on the other side, just like this, and pull this down. And this is what you should have. Now we have to sew through this entire unit to um, make sure that all the beads are in the proper place. So we're coming out of this 11 out here. We go up into this 8 out. Then we go down into the 11 out, 8 out, and the cylindrical bead, and then into the 8 out and 11 out on the inside here of the necklace on this side. Pull your thread through and now we're going to go through this 8 here and then we're going to go through the 11 again and all the way back down. Just because if we do not that Edo will not be in the proper position. So I have gone through the Edo, the 11 o, 
the 11 note, the 8 note, and then the cylindrical bead. I also need to come up through the 8 and 11 on this side. And then here. All the way back down through again. I just exit the cylindrical bead. It's just easier. And then I can go towards the outside of the 8 here and into that 11 ohm. Okay, so this is what it should look like, just like this. Now we're going to go into this 8 here, right here. Pull your thread through. Make sure everything is straightened out. You don't have any twisting or anything weird. And then you are going to pick up two 11 0 seed beads. And you're going to go back down into this 8 0 seed bead. Now, doing this process will also help us put another passive thread through the charm. So we're coming out of this 8 0. We've got two 11 O's on our needle. We're going to go into the 8 0 above the pendant and then through the pendant loop. Hold on to it and pull these down. Now, if, if things get all bobbled up, just straighten it all back out and then go back up through the 8 0 that's attached to the pendant right here and just that 8 hold on to it pull your thread through and pick up <clears throat> two 11 seed beads and then come up through the 8 on this side of the unit so the other unit on the other side of the necklace and pull those two 11 O's into place now it's going to get all weird and look all strange. We will fix that. Just tighten things up a little bit. And let me get you close so you can see what it looks like. And that's what that looks like. Now, we need to sew up through this unit. And then we'll come through this 8 cross over and come back through. So let me show you what I mean. We're coming out of this 8 We're going to go into the 11 The 8 and the cylindrical bead. Oh, come on, you. And then up through and just exit that big bead. Pull your thread through. Give a little tug so that there's no slack. And then you're going to go through this 8 0 and this 11 0 here. So we're on the side. To, to the inside of the necklace. Then we're going to go into this 8 0 down into the 11 0 and 8 0 here, and through the cylindrical bead. And just exit the middle of the cylindrical bead here. If you can, you can go ahead and cross over. So see, I'm going at a diagonal. I'm going through this bead and through the cylindrical bead. I'm coming through this 8 and 11 which is on the inside of the necklace. So I'm going at a diagonal, coming through these beads, which will position me to move on, go back to the other side, and be able to make my new units. So I'm just going to pull this through. So I'm coming out of this 11 right here now. And I am going to pick up three white 11 O's. I may only need two, but I'm gonna try three and see what happens here. So I'm coming out of this 11 i I've got three white 11 O's. See, do I want three? We're gonna try it. And then I'm going to go into the 11 O on this side. So straight over. Skip this turquoise 8 0, go into the 11 0, the silver one, into the white 8 0, and through the cylindrical bead. 
and pull these down. Now, actually, that's too many. So I am going to pull this out and I am going to just put into, or actually, I could go ahead and break one out, but that could weaken my thread. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, take one off. I'm somewhat designing. I did make a piece, but the centerpiece I wanted to redesign a little bit. So bear with me. We've got, I've got to rethread my needle and I will be right back. Okay, so I have rethreaded my needle and I have two 11 O's on here. And I'm just going to go through this 11 O that is right above the 8 O that is right above the cylindrical bead on the unit across from the one that I'm coming out of. So I'm going to go straight into this 11 O and up through the big bead, just like this. And pull this over. Now you don't have to pull it exceedingly tight, just enough to where there's no slack, just like that. Now we are coming out of this cylindrical bead. Let's go up through one of the 8-0s here, doesn't matter which one, and the 11 -0 behind it, and then into this 8-0 here, and we will begin making our units again. So I'll make one with you, and then we will go off camera and we will stop when we get 12 units including this one so let me back off now i'm going to pick up an 11 o seed bead i'm going to pick up a white um 8 o and then a cylindrical bead and i'm going to drop it down then i am going to pick up a white cylindrical or <laughs> white cylindrical yeah 8 o I'm going to pick up a white 8 o and drop it down. And then I'm going to pick up an 11 o and a turquoise 8 o and an 11 o and a white 8 o. Now, of course, you can pick those all up at once. It's just, you know, I'm just being weird. So this is what you should have. Then you go back through your cylindrical bead and hold on to it and pull these down. Pull everything together so that there's no slack and then you pick up a white 8 and then another 11 and you will go through the turquoise 8 here that you're attaching to. It's like this. And then up through the 11 o, the 8 o, the big bead, and then again through the 8 o, the 11 o, and all the way around until you have secured the entire piece. Then you have to sew back up to the 8 o that we just now went through. So I'm just sewing all the way around the entire unit and twist you and then into the one I'm attaching to. Now I'm secure but I have to get all the way up to this bead. So I have to go through the 11080 big bead and out through the 80 and 110 And then I can go into my 8 o here and begin my units again. So you're going to do the units exactly like you did on the other side and make 12 of them just like you did on this side. So go ahead and continue making the 12 units. If you need to back up the video and watch how we did the previous units, of course you can do that. And we'll be back as soon as we get 12 of them made. 
Okay, so now I have made my 12 units on the second side here, and I am ready to put my wire guardian on to prepare for my clasping. So I'm coming out of this 80C bead after I've sewn around the last unit and secured it. And now I am going to get a little closer here, and we are going to pick up two 110 seed beads and an 80 and drop it down to the 11, the 80 we're coming out of. Then we're going to pick up the wire guardian and go through one side of the wire guardian, just like this. Then I'm going to put my thumb and finger over it, drag it down, position it, and then I am going to go through the other side. If I can get it to stay still, I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guardian. So I'm putting my needle through the other tube and I am going to pull my thread through, guide it into the divot, and then give a little tug, pulling it down into place. Now, these wire guardians are so small, they like to fall into the 80 seed bead here. So I have to kind of push that 80 down, and then I am going to squeeze my wire guardian just gently together. So I backed it away from the 80 like this. I'm going to hold it together here and just squeeze it slightly. Now I can just pull everything back down to that 80. And that should discourage it from going in to that 80 seed bead. A little bit. There we go. Now I need to go back into the 80. And I will just go through that 80. Pull the thread through. And because I've messed with it so much, I knocked my thread out of the divot. So I'll just readjust that. And that's what that looks like, just like that. And now I need to put two 11 0 seed beads on the other side of the 80 that we're connecting to. So I've picked up two 11 0s. If I said 80, I was wrong. It's two 11 0s. And then we're going to go through the 80 on the opposite side, the one we're attaching to and then pull this all down together, just like this. Now we're going to sew through this two more times just to make sure that we're nice and secure. Once you've sewn through the entire thing two times and you're coming out of this 80 seed bead, we'll be back and ready to start our next step. Okay, I have secured my end here with my wire guardian now and I'm coming out of the 80 seed bead again. Now I want to show you which way we want to make sure you're facing here. So you can turn it, you can turn this first unit if you need to. However, you should be coming out towards the outside of your necklace. So out of the 80 towards the outside. So here is my pendant and so this would be the inside, this is the outside. We are going to put an embellishment on the outside. First, make sure you align all of your units so they're nice and neat, nothing is twisted, and your pendant and everything is in line facing forward. Now, we are going to be coming out of this 80 seed bead here, and we are going to go down into the 11 0, the next 80 and into the um, cylindrical bead here. So we're just going to go straight down into all three of these beads. So we're exiting this big bead right here. And I'm going to pull my thread through. Make sure at this point that if you have a really short thread to go ahead and extend it before you start this embellishment because you're going to be sewing through a lot of these beads and if you make your extension knot a little bit big it can make it more difficult. So make sure that you have a nice extension of your thread and then we are going to go into the 80 and the 110 right here and exit that 110. We're now going to start using our white 11 O's for this entire process. So we're going to pick up a white frosted 11 O or whatever color scheming you're using, of course. And we're going to go from this 11 O into this 11 O, the 8 O underneath it, and the cylindrical bead. 
And if you can, you can go ahead and go through the 80 and the next 1102. Let's see if I can get through all of them. And I cannot, so I'm just going to go through the 11080 cylindrical bead and then pull this 110 down between the two 110s on the unit that my first unit between these two units here. Okay, so we're just placing the white 11 O's between the silver 11 O's on each little unit in between our big beads here. So then we're coming out of the cylindrical bead. We pick up or we go through the 80 and the 11 O right underneath that bead right here and pull the thread through pick up an 11 L and then go through the 11 O and 8 O on the other side here and go through the cylindrical bead. Now it takes a tiny bit of manipulation to get through but it's really not hard. I also changed my needle to a bigger needle because my size 12 was bending so badly but the size 12 will work better for this. So we're just going to continue putting this little white 11 o between the, 11, the silver 11 o's, which brings a curve to the necklace. Now, if you don't want your necklace to be stiffer and you don't want it to be chokerish, you don't have to do this step. You can just tie off after you put your wire guardian on and put your clasping on. But this is what's going to make it more choker style. So what it does is it curves it in a circle. So you want to continue then, we're coming out of the cylindrical bead, we go into the 80, 11 o, pick up an 11 o, and then go into the 11 o, 8 o, and cylindrical bead in the next unit. And we're going to continue doing that. Now make sure as you do this, you straighten out your piece several times so that nothing is twisted. You don't want these twisted at all. You want to make sure that every time you insert your white 11 o it's towards the outside of your units. We're going to go ahead and continue doing that till we get down here to the last unit and we'll be back. Okay, so now I have put my 11 o my white 11 o between my sil silver 11 o's all the way to this last one here and I'm going to show you how to travel through the pendant and do this side. You can see how this one little step has curved my necklace. So that's what I want. I want it to be in that shape because it'll hang perfectly as a little choker for me. Now, or a little collar. So now we're right here. We're going to put in our last white 11 o between the two silvers and then we are going to travel down into this 80 these three 11 o's the 80 and through the pendant back up into the 80 and through the three 11 o's on this side and into the 80 i'm showing you that first so you have an idea of what I'm doing in case my fingers get in the way. Now we can turn it over when we do this too because you can see those three 11 O's better. So let's do this and then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to place this last 11 O and I am going to go through the cylindrical bead here just like this and bring this 11 O down and then I'm going to go through this 80 here. I'm going to turn my piece over and I'm going to go through the 11 o, or excuse me, the 80, the three 11 o's here that hook to the 80 that attaches the pendant. Now, we're going to go through this one more time because we only have two things of thread here anyway. So, this is our third. Um, what do I want to say, layer of thread through the pendant, which will help keep it more secure. Now we're, we've come through these three 11 O's, we go through the 8 O, and we go through the clasp like this. And pull this through, come back up through the 8 O, here, pull it through, 
come back through these three 11 O's on this side, up through the 8 -oh. I'm going to turn it back over and see if I can finagle. I'm just going to go up and pull it through the 8 -oh here because I can't seem to finagle myself through the cylindrical bead yet. So make sure I'm not tangled. Pull this through. And now we have traveled through the pendant. And all I have to do is go up through this cylindrical bead here. And the 8 -oh and 11 -oh on this side. And I can't get that 11 -oh, so I will just pull this through. And then go up through the 11 -oh here, just like this, and then start placing my 11 o between the 11 o's on this side. Again, make sure that you situate your entire strand so that it's not twisted and you can orient exactly where you want your outside embellishment to go because if you turn it, it's not going to lay correctly. So you want to make sure, because you don't want to have an 11 0 here between these two 11 0s and then one on the inside and then one on the outside. That's not going to work. So we want to make sure that we've laid it out and it is the way we want it to look. And then we continue traveling through, putting the 11 0 seed bead, the white one, between the silver ones just like this and we will continue all the way up this side until we get to our clasping area and then we'll come back okay so now you can see that I have put my embellishment all the way around the entire second half here and I am coming out of the cylindrical bead here we are going to go up through this last piece so when you come up through after you put your little white seed bead in there you're going to go into the 8 -oh on the outside of the necklace and up through the 8 -oh, or excuse me up through the 8 -oh, the white 8 -oh, and the 11 -oh on top of it right there and then you're going to go through the 8 -oh, which is connecting your clasping. So just go straight through that 8 -oh. And now you're going to go down into the 11 -oh and 8 -oh on top of this cylindrical bead here. And we are going to start sewing down through all the inside beads. We are not going to add a, um, a seed bead in between. This time we're just going to pull it all together which will cinch this even tighter into a stiffer stitch that will hold its circular form even better. You do not have to do this part. You can go ahead and knot off at this point also. So you do not have to do the outside embellishment and you do not have to do the inside embellishment if you want this to just be a regular type necklace. But if you want it to be nice and stiff and chokerish, then you'll want to finish this. So this is what we're going to do. Let me get you in closer. I'm coming out of this 8 -oh here. I'm going to go into the 11 -oh and 8 -oh beneath it. I'm going to go into the cylindrical bead and I'm going to pull my needle through. And like I said, I'm using a little bit bigger needle so it's a little tighter. And then I'm going to go through this 8 -oh, this 11 -oh, and instead of placing and 11 0 between, I'm just going to pick up the 11 0 and 8 0 here, pull my needle through, make sure you have a nice amount of thread before you do this. So if you need to extend, do that before. And then I'm going to go into the cylindrical bead here. And then I'm just going to continue. I'm going to come out on the inside and go through the 8 0 11 0 11 0 8 0 inside this next little unit here just like this and pull this through and I'm just going to travel all the way around what this will do is as I give my little tug oh come here it will 
draw these little 11 O's together on the inside. Perhaps not perfectly, but it will draw them together somewhat. It will cinch the necklace in a little bit and it will complete our circular um, form that we are creating. So continue to go ahead and sew through all of the inside beads, pulling your thread as you do it. When you get to the center, you're going to want to just, excuse me, let me get you in close. You're going to want to just travel through the 8 to 11 to 11 0s 11 8 and just continue your inside. So we are going to sew all the way around the entire inside through all these inside beads here until we get to the very end and we will be back. Okay, so now I have gone all the way around the inside, sewing through the inside beads and gently drawing everything together on the inside. Like I said, it doesn't draw it together perfectly, but it does give it a little bit more structure. So this particular um, choker style has a lot of structure to it. And when you put it on, if it's close to your neck, it will stay in a nice circular shape. So what we're going to do now is we're coming out of this very last cylindrical bead here on this side. As I came around, I came through the very last cylindrical bead and stopped before I went through the last eight set of eight O's here. So my thread is coming out of this bead. I am just going to go up and between the cylindrical bead and the eight O bead just like this. And I'm going to tie a knot right here on that thread bridge between those beads. So go through, pull a loop, go through your loop, and just make sure that as you pull your thread down into a knot, it goes between those beads and not on top of them. Come here. Okay, so now that I have done that, I can go back down this cylindrical bead here. So I'm through the top, now I'm going back down it so I don't have to sew through my clasping area again because it's got enough thread through it. And I'm just going to go down into the cylindrical bead and again I'm going to go between the 8 and the cylindrical bead right here. See if I can get up between these two 8 O's. I'm bring my thread down towards the beads here. Pull it tight into a loop just like this and then I'm going to go through the loop and pull a knot down. Then I'm just going to sew through this 8 and I think I'll just cut my thread there. Okay. So now I have my little choker all done. Let's see what it looks like. I just need to put my clasping on the end here. So what I've done is I've taken some jump rings and just hooked them together. Most people know how to do that by now if you've been following me. If you have not, and this is your first time, this is what you will do. Here's a jump ring, and it's uh, five millimeter round. Here's the opening of the jump ring, so there's a little slit in the jump ring. I'm putting one of my chain nose pliers on one side of that slit, and then I'm going to put another pair on the other side, and I'm just going to twist it open like that. And then I'm going to pick up my um, jump rings that I've hooked together. So basically you open, you drop it on a jump ring, and you close the jump ring. For this last one, I'm going to also drop it on the end of my necklace here on the wire guardian. And then I'm just going to take the jump ring and close it the way I've opened it. And drop it, of course, because, you know, that was just not very graceful. So let me do this again. Let me open this back up. So I have to open and then drop it onto the wire guardian and then I just close it the same way I opened it. Just close it back by twisting it. 
just like this and just make sure it's closed nice and tightly and I've also made just a little component with an eye pin to put on the end here so what I've done is I've attached a bunch of five millimeter jump rings to one um, like seven millimeter jump ring on the very end here and then I've made a little component with a head pin just a little basic looped component and I've dropped it on there. Now if you don't know how to do that, there's lots of videos on my channel that will show you how, but this video is getting very long and it's not um, important to the design. If you wanna make one, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. So now this is what I have. And I'm going to grab a tiny jump ring now. I've got like a four millimeter jump ring and I'm going to open it the same way I did my last one. Let me get you in close again here. And just find the opening. Put your two pairs of pliers on there and twist it open. Then I'm going to drop it on my lobster claw here. And then I'm going to drop it on the wire guardian, or drop the wire guardian onto the jump ring and close my jump ring. So always twist your jump rings. Never try to pull them open or squish them shut. Doesn't work. You will only hold the integrity of the shape if you twist them. So this is what we have, my little darlings. It turned out really cute. And I put my other design on and it lays really nice. Just have to make sure you don't twist it because it is stiff and it wants to lay a certain way. When you go to put it on, you just have to arrange it so that it is in the shape that you want it to be on your neck and then go ahead and put it on. Make sure it's not twisted when you put it on. This will lay right at the very base of your neck, right above your collarbone level. This will be right in the indentation of your throat there. So this turns out really, really cute. And I hope you liked it. I apologize for my voice. Every day it's getting a little bit stronger, but um, after I talk for a while, it just gets weak. And I apologize for that. But I don't feel bad. I just sound terrible. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked making this with me, please consider clicking the subscribe button and the notification button, the bell so that we can continue to make pretty pieces of jewelry together. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.